you in spirit and truth, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for Pentecost. We thank you, oh God, for one accord. In the name of Jesus, oh God. We glorify you on today. We magnify you on today. We lift up the service before you on today, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. We lift it up before you today. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we speak peace, oh God, even over the atmosphere. We thank you for your peace, your peace, not the world peace. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you, oh God, for peace that surpasses all understanding, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you, oh God, for your peace, oh God. We thank you for your anointing, oh God. We pull on your anointing today. We thank you for grace, oh God. Your grace is sufficient. We thank you for your grace on today, Lord. Your grace is sufficient, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah, oh God. We thank you, Father God, for the new sound. We thank you for breakthrough in the atmosphere on today, God. We thank you for even, oh God, healing that will take place on today. We thank you, oh God, lives will be transformed in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you, oh God, you will do something like never before, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that no one will leave here the same. We thank you for transformation, oh God. We thank you for renewed minds in the name of Jesus, oh God. We bow before you, oh God. We enter into your heavenly gates. We enter in, we enter in. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we say have your way in the name of Jesus. Let your glory fall up. Let your anointing fall up. Let your fire fall up in the name of Jesus, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you for the fruit of our, we give you the fruit of our lips in the name of Jesus, oh God. We praise you on today. We glorify you on today in the name of Jesus, oh God. I thank you, oh God. I pray, oh God, for every apostle, every prophet, every teacher, pastor, oh God. I pray for them on today, God. I thank you for one accord across this region, across this nation, oh God. We thank you for unity, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you for unity, oh God. We ask, oh God, that you just do a new thing in our minds, oh God. Shift our mindsets on today, God. Glorify, oh, we glorify you. God, shift our mindsets on today, God. Shift us into a higher realm, a higher dimension in you, God. Take us higher on today. Take us higher on today. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you, oh God, that the angels are ascending and descending, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that we crucify the flesh, oh God. We come against the works of the flesh, God. We come against the works of the flesh, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you, oh God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, God, that the gates of hell, the gates of hell shall not prevail. In the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you, God. We cry out to our Father. We cry out before you, Father. In the name of Jesus, God. We worship you on today. We thank you for your presence on today. We just love on you today. We love on you today. We welcome you in, Holy Spirit. We say come in. 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 Come in, Holy Spirit. Oh, come in, Holy Spirit. And have your way up. Jesus, oh God, we thank you for your glory. We thank you for the kabod, the weight of your glory in the name of Jesus, oh God.
the name of Jesus, oh Lord. Lord, I ask for a fresh outpour, oh God, of your spirit, oh God. Lord, I ask for a fresh outpour of your fire, oh God. You said those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, oh God, they will be filled, oh God. So I ask for a refreshment today in the name of Jesus, oh God. We seek you, oh God. We yield to your presence, oh Lord. We yield to your power, oh God. We yield to your authority, oh God. We humble ourselves before you today, oh God. And we ask, oh God, that you have your way, oh God. This is not about us, oh God. It's not about us being glorified, but it's all about you, oh God. So I pray, oh God, so that you get the glory, oh God. May you show up, oh Lord, so that you get the glory, oh God. I pray that you rest on this atmosphere so that you get the glory, oh God. I pray that you touch every single heart, touch every single life in the name of Jesus, oh God. I thank you that in your presence there is transformation, oh God. I thank you that in your presence, oh God, there is fullness of joy, oh God. So we ask, oh God, that you will show up, oh Lord. We ask, oh God, that the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit, oh God, will be tangible in this place today, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, oh God, may we see your face today, oh God. May we experience you in a brand new way, oh God. I pray, oh God, that we will just touch the hem of your garments today, oh God. May we be whole and healed, oh God, in you, in the name of Jesus, oh Lord. We don't want to leave the same, oh God. We don't want to do the same thing, oh God. We want to seek after you, oh God. We pursue after you, oh Lord. And I thank you, oh God, that in our pursuit, oh God, you said if we draw closer to you, oh God, that you will draw closer to us, oh Lord. So I pray that your glory will fall, oh God. I pray that your power will fall, oh God. I pray for a fresh anointing, oh God. A fresh outpour of your oil, oh God. May your oil, oh God, fall in this place, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, oh Lord. We need your power, oh God. We can do nothing without your power, oh God. It's not in our own strength. It's not in our own might. But it's by the Spirit in the name of Jesus, oh Lord. So Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, move. Holy Spirit, speak. Holy Spirit, touch. Holy Spirit, oh God, you are welcome in the name of Jesus. You are welcome, oh God. We give this service over to you, oh Lord. We give it over to you, oh God, and we say, have your way. It's not about a schedule, but it's about you getting the glory, oh God. So move, oh Lord. Move as only you can. And it's in your holy name that I pray. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Worship the Lord. Magnify the Lord. Give him praise this morning. Give him honor this morning. Come on, you can do better than that. If that was for me, I wouldn't even accept it. The King of kings and the Lord of lords is here on your behalf. Lord, we crucify our flesh. We lay it down at your feet, oh God. We lay it down at your altar, oh God. Hijack us today, oh God. Hijack our attitudes, oh God. Hijack our circumstances, oh God. Hijack our thoughts on today, Father, so we can give you all the glory and all the honor, all the praise that is due you, Father. You said in your word, indeed, you are looking now for those who will worship you in spirit and in truth. Let us have a spirit of truth and worship. Let us have a spirit of truth and worship. Listen, people of God, we're not going to move until... Until there's a break, and this is Pentecost Sunday. I understand that. But we live, we move, and we have our being in Him. In Him. In Him. And so what that means is that we have to crucify our flesh. We have to think, we have to not think about the things that may have irritated us five minutes ago, what things may look like. I'm not here to pump or prom you. I'm not here to be your cheerleader. But I'm going to tell you this thing. God has been too good to me. He's been too good to me not to give my all in the worship, not to give my all in the praise. Amen. There will be a, a, a grave that I should be in. Hallelujah. And so for that alone, I will give him glory. And for that alone, I will give him honor. We have to be so undignified in our worship to him. Not because the churches have taught people if you run around, if you flip over, if you sweat out your clothes, you've had church today. Listen, I want to be changed. I want to be renewed. I want to be revived. I want to be restored. I want to be refreshed. Amen. And if that's you, we're going to give you 45 seconds just to let it all out and give it over to God. However 
where you see fit. If you need to fall on the floor, if you need to walk this floor, if you need to run around in the back, if you need to lay out, give it over to him. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh shit, it and I shut down my head and oh shit. Hey, and I shut down my head, hey, and I shut down. Hey, and I shut down my head and oh shit, hey, and I shut down. A break, a break, 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 break. Hey, and I shut down my head and oh shit, hey, and I shut down. Hey, and I shut down my head and I shut down. Hey, and I shut down my head and oh shit, hey, and I shut down. Come on, people, press, 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 press. So the Lord can take us into his secret place. So the Lord can take us into his secret place. So the Lord can take us before his throne. Hey, and I shut down my head and oh shit, hey, and I shut down. This is the only way we get strategies. This is the only way we get blueprints. This is the 
only way we get directions is in the worship and in the intercession. Speak, Holy Spirit, speak. Smooth, Holy Spirit, move. Oh God, take the veil off our eyes. Take the cover off our ears so we can hear you clearly, so we can see you clearly, oh God, so we can move with you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, press, 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 people of God. People of God, press, press. I don't want to pump you, but I want you to press. Press deep, press deep, press deep, press deep. Come on, let's hey, and I shut up. Let's say press deep. Come on, yeah, and I shut up. My head is shaking and I shut up. Come on, it's for your neighbor. It's for your neighbors. It's for your friends. It's for your families. It's not just for this church. It's not just for us. Hey, and I shut up. My head is shaking and I shut up.
we start this worship zone, and if, if the stuff is just messing up, it's just going to mess up. You can hear what we're saying. I was just grieved. I've been grieved and heavy this week because the people of God have the solutions right here. And yet we look at them and we walk away. We have direction and understanding right here. And we tell the Lord, it's not good enough for me. And so I walk away and then we say, Lord, what's going on? What's happening in this world? They're killing kids. There's famine. There's desolation. There's destruction and diseases. And all God tells us is if my people, if my people, if, that's it. It's an if my people who are called by my name, the next step is will humble themselves. And so we're walking around like pride, arrogant Christians. And then and on the side, we say, what's going on? But God told us, if, if you're my child, if you're my people, all you got to do is humble yourself. Humble yourself. Turn away from the wickedness. Turn away from the sin. Seek my face. Then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. This is time for the true church to stand up. This is the time for the true believers to get their war clothes on and say, I am a child of God. I have humbled myself. I understand the importance of the assignment on my life. I'm not going to be worried about what's going on in the world, what they're doing, and how they're doing it. I'm not concerned about entertaining churches. I'm not concerned about whatever your bishop or your pastor has told you to do. But for me and my house, for me and my house, turn away from sin. We are going to turn away from wickedness. We are going to seek the Lord's face so that he can hear us from heaven. When we cry out, oh God, send us where you want us to go. And then we'll be Goshen. We'll be the place that the people of God can go and have respite and have purity and have peace have holiness and have righteousness but we have to get this thing up off of us called flesh that always want to pick up the things God has not called us to do and has not called us where to go we have to humble ourselves we have to pray we have to turn away from sin compromise wickedness if it's in the word <laughs> he has told you to stay away from stay away from it if it's not in the word and he has told you to stay away from it stay away from it because that becomes sin let me teach you a little bit if the Lord says Shanika don't eat any more ice cream that's not in the word of God but if I get up and I go to Ben and Jerry's I am sinning against God who told me not to eat ice cream my convictions may not be yours my sin may not be yours. We have to be a people who understands the word of God and the heart of the Father. He wants us to be pure and holy because those are the people who ascend to the hills. Those with clean hands and a pure heart. So if there's any compromise in your life, lay it at his feet today. If your mouth has called you to sin, gouge it out. If your eyes have caused you to sin, gouge it out. Oh shit, I just feel repentance in the air. I feel it repentance in the spirit. And for those who say, I don't need to repent, you really need to repent. I don't miss a chance to say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I repent for things I've done knowingly and unknowingly. Because I want to be found right before you. I want to be found in right standing before you.
But people in Noah days didn't have time to repent. So whenever the opportunity is presented before you to go to a living God and say, Lord, forgive me. I repent of my sins. You take the opportunity and you get it right with him. Y'all ready to go deeper in worship? I'm you ready to go. I just want to share this scripture before we sing. Matthew, Matthew 3, verse 8 says, Therefore, produce fruit consistent with repentance. Therefore, produce fruit consistent with repentance. I'm going to say it one more time. Therefore, produce fruit consistent with repentance. That means we as a people, we cannot produce any fruit until we repent. The Lord says, the heaviness that you are feeling is his heart. Just like we get tired. God is tired. But he's not too tired to pull us up. We get tired and we don't know how to call our friend or call our brother and sister in Christ and say, I need prayer because we're too ashamed to be transparent. But God is saying to you today, you will produce fruit if you just repent. The Lord also said before we came up here, not that every instrument is not important because it is. But the reason that this house looks different today for Pentecost, for worship, is because he wants to deal with our hearts. He doesn't want to deal with the entertainment. He doesn't want to deal with the theatrics of worship. He doesn't want to deal with what your flesh likes and what your flesh thinks feels good. He wants to deal with the true you, including myself. So this is not just another worship service. I'm just like Providence. If you came for an entertainment service, I'm sorry. You can come next Sunday. Maybe it'll be here for you. But this is a service of transformation. We want to see you in all of your glory. We don't want just part of you. We want all. You're the only king there is. I dare you this morning. I implore you. I encourage you to worship God just before. I have one last thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was watching a video over the weekend. And this guy was talking about uh, mimes and how we have dancers in church. He gave a revelation, but what the Lord gave me the revelation of was, well, what I heard in the spirit when the man did this video. So you know, we have mimes in church, we have dancers, all of that, we have flags. And what I heard in the spirit was, oh man, we can't have nothing. Because he was breaking it down in a way to say that we're not supposed to be doing that in church. Back in the day, mimes were against the God that we serve. It was a mockery to him. I don't care about any demon that gets flustered over it this morning either. I'm going to share it because of the authentic. Because he's a creator. And so he said, think about it, Keandra. He was the first creator of the world. We live in. So he gave, gave me this this revelation. There's a there's a restaurant here called Melting Pot. If, if any of you have been, it's a restaurant called Melting Pot here. And when you go in, they give you the menu. You choose everything, but then they give you your utensils, your cookware, 
and they leave you to do it, right? They leave it there at the table. If you've been before, they give you everything you need, and then they walk away. They want you to cook the food yourself, not because they are lazy and can't do it, but the owner who created this restaurant understands that there is something great that comes out of creating your own food. Hear me what I'm saying in the spirit. You don't get to just create it, but you get to witness and live in the experience of it. So the revelation the Lord gave me was that is how God is with us. He reveals the truth to us, not so we can be down and say we feel as though we are being stripped away from things we enjoy, but it is to get us to a place of authenticity. So I encourage you as we're worshiping this morning, if you can stand to your feet, I want you to worship God because we're going to a place of transformation in this room and authenticity. After today, I declare and I decree God that your people and even the worshipers, even the minstrels, they will come to another level in the name of Jesus. The authenticity, God, that you have created them, that you have blessed their hands to play, that you have opened our mouths to sing, that you have designed, that you have given ideas to so many inventors in this place, that they have their own in the name of Jesus, I call it forth because God is going to give you the tools. He's going to give you the utensils. He's going to give you everything you need. But you have to repent first. Because where repenting is, the fruit is there. Where repenting is, the fruit is there. Where the repenting is, the fruit is there. Waiting, waiting for you.
were tired but well, we didn't have strength I can't remember the exact words but the Lord is saying I've given my word for you to declare it out of your mouth that's why the scripture says he gives us wings like an eagle that we can mount up that we can run and not be weary that we can walk and not faint
want to canvas the room really quick. How many people woke up this morning? Come on, I said, how many people woke up this morning? How many people are still breathing? How many people are still in their right mind? How many people still have blood flowing through their veins? You see, these are the things that we forget about. We get good and well in our lives, but we forget about the little things that God is doing. I know that it's a hard thing. I know that it's a hard thing. The last couple of weeks, we've been talking about sin and repentance. But we took a stand and said we refuse to be a church that will not preach the full counsel of God. That includes sin and that includes repentance. We will not stand up here every Sunday and fluff it up and pump you up and prime this thing up, make you feel good so that you can get out there and when you fall, you have nowhere to turn and you come back in here. Listen, we want to be a church that's going to tell you that no, you need to get it right. Your heart needs to be in the right place. Your mind needs to be in the right place. We need to be in alignment with what God is doing. It's time out for the fluff. It's time out for the pumping. But God wants a people who is holy. For he said, be ye holy for I am holy. For there will come a time when you will have no place to repent. There will come a time when you will have no place to say I'm sorry. There will come a time when you won't find repentance. The Bible talks about two brothers. One named Jacob, one named Esau. Esau served his, sold his birthright to his brother Jacob. When he realized what he did, he caused all this hell in his life. But his life was so compromised that even when he sought forgiveness, there was found none. And here's the revelation in that. It wasn't that he was coming to God asking for repentance. It was because he'd uncompromised in what he has done that even when he attempted to come before God, there was no room. I said, God, I refuse to have a cold heart. I refuse to have a hard heart. I refuse to have a heart that never seeks after repentance. I want it to be broken. I want it to be contrite. This is the season where we have to make sure our houses our temples are swept clean that there is nothing dwelling on the inside of us that will cause us to be separated from a holy God because his return is imminent and some of the things that I see some of the things that I hear is scary and I told someone the other day surely this has to be the great falling away because I've never seen it to this magnitude. I've seen people sin. I've seen people compromise. But to this magnitude and to this degree, surely this has to be the great falling away. And the scary part about it is that the people that I'm watching are the people that say I'm a Christian. The people that say I believe in God. The people that say I serve God day and night. It's those very same people who have compromised their lives. Listen to the seriousness behind this. I fear God so much. I don't want to stand behind him and say, didn't I not heal in your name? Did I not prophesy in your name? Did I not preach in your name? And he says, I don't know who you are. I don't want to be a person who thinks he is called by God's name. Only to stand by him. We don't understand the seriousness of the time that we are living in. But God is saying, I just want a holy people. I just want a holy people. We have to stop compromising. We have to stop compromising. What God said is not for us, it's not for us. In the book of Kings, we see that God's people would get it right and then they would get it wrong and then they would cry out to God and then he would send them another king and they would get it right and then they would get it wrong and they would cry out to God and he would send them another king and they would get it right and then they would get it wrong they kept compromising and God is saying listen even though my grace is sufficient there's going to come a time where you're not going to have no room for repentance no room for repentance God's grace is sufficient. 
and his grace abounds where sin abounds. But should we sin knowing that his grace abounds? God forbid. If you got nothing else from these last two weeks, that we've been up here before you, if you can't feel, just like Prominent Shanika said, if you can't feel the shift in the spiritual realm, you might want to do a heart check with God and say, God, I need to be in alignment with what you're doing. Not just in my life, but in the life of your people. Because I believe that your return is imminent. And when you come, I want to go. So when I said, did you wake up in your right mind? When I say, did you wake up this morning? When I say, did you wake up and still have the, the functionality of your limbs? That is a moment to rejoice and be glad in it. It doesn't matter what else is consuming your mind. It doesn't matter what you're wrestling with or battling with or stressed out with. And if you just think about the fact that God is sovereign enough to wake you up this morning, I want to be the first person to repent. I want to be the first person to get it right. I want to be the first person. That should be our cry. That God, I want to be the first person to make sure my heart is right with you, God. What good is it to praise you and worship you with my lips if my heart is far from you? I want my heart to be right. And if you got to search your heart on today to make sure that it's right, that you have to do what you have to do. But don't leave this place without examining what's going on on the inside of you. Do not leave this place because I believe that God has created an atmosphere conducive for repenting. And I don't want you to leave this place still harboring the things that are keeping you detached from him. This is the time to get it right. If we can't even partake of the holy sacraments, if we can't even take communion without first examining our hearts, what makes us think that we can step foot in the house of God and just praise and, and dance and jump around and our hearts be far from God? I want to be in alignment. God, make us over. Make us new. Make us fresh. Restore us, God. Refine us in this room, God. Give us our hunger and a desire, God. Not just after you, God, but after repentance, God. We don't want your eyes to be turned away from us, God. We don't want your ears to be turned away from us, God. But, Lord, we pray even now that you would gaze upon your remnant, Father. Those, God, who are coming before you, Father, and just laying everything at your feet, God make sure that they're in alignment with you God for your purpose is great the assignment on this earth is great and we want to be in your perfect will hallelujah God we bless you we love you God in Jesus name amen listen really quick it's time to give in the house of the Lord I believe that as Apostle Reggie is preparing his word I believe that the Lord is ready to speak. If he hasn't spoken already, if you need an envelope, just raise your hand. We'll get one to you. We'll definitely get one to you. Just raise your hand. We have Mr. Rissa standing in the back. If you want to give online, you can go to www.contagious.church. We are one church with two locations. If you find the Charlotte location, hit the give button, follow the promptings. It's very simple. You can also do PayPal, paypal.me backslash Contagious Church. You can uh, give on your app store if you download the Contagious Church app. If you find the Charlotte location, follow the promptings. It's very simple. You can text to give in your message box on your phone. Put give CLT to number eight. 813-308-0638 that is give CLT in a message box to 813-308-0638 and last but not least you can give on our cash app money sign contagious CLT money sign contagious CLT the most important thing is that you give 
As a man purposes it in his heart, so let him give. We're not going to beg you for anything. We're not going to put our hands in your pockets. We're not going to take out 15 offerings, but I believe that God has laid upon your heart exactly what he desires for you to sow and to give into the service. So once again, it's www.contagious.church. Find a Charlotte location, hit the give button, follow the promptings. PayPal.me backslash Contagious Charlotte. You can go to your app store, download our application, Contagious Church app. Find a Charlotte location, hit give. It's very simple. You can text to give. Give COT in a message box to number 813-308-0638. Last but not least, you can give on our cash app money sign. Contagious CLT. We want to say thank you to those who have decided to stand alongside this ministry and partner with us. We are truly grateful for your hearts, and I believe that your generous giving will go a mighty long way. Also, we want to say thank you to those who are visiting with us today. I see a couple of new faces. We'd like to welcome you to the place where the love, the faith, and the worship of God is contagious. We are Contagious Church. Our location is here in Charlotte, but we have another location in Tampa as well. So we are just grateful for your presence today. You could have worshipped anywhere else, but you decided to come and worship with us. So as, as Miss Larissa is handing you these cards, we just ask that you would fill those cards out so that we can connect with you. Just put it in an offering bucket once you're finished with that. But we want to reach out to you, get to know a little bit about who you are, share a little bit about who we are, what God is doing with us in this region of Charlotte. We're not just another ministry. We're not just another church. But we believe that we've been called by God to this region to do what he has called us to do. So, so listen, we want to definitely get to know who you are and just to see how we can uh, be of assistance to you in whatever area that is. So, so thank you guys again for, for worshiping us today. I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to get out your way, and we're going to prepare ourselves for the word. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, most gracious God, we thank you even now, God for this service, Lord. We thank you that your spirit is dwelling with us even now in the name of Jesus. God, we pray that as you have moved upon the hearts of your people, Lord, to even sow into this environment, God. Lord, I pray, God, even now, God, that you would blow upon every gift and every seed, God. Let every seed fall upon good ground, God, for where there is good ground, there will be a great harvest produced, Lord. So I pray, I don't know what your people are believing you for, God, but I pray even now that you would count it unto them, Father, as righteousness, God. But we believe that this is a form of worship, God. We want to worship you in spirit and in truth, Father God. For I know that even this area is challenging for most, God. But Lord, I ask that you would continue to stretch us, God, to trust you even the more, God. We bless you, God, for every gift that was sown on today. God, let it tap into regions and cities and states and countries and, and continents, God, that has never touched before, God. Create opportunities, God, for your word to be disseminated into all the earth, Father. Lord, we just bless you for what you're doing on the behalf of this ministry, God, for we will be a ministry, God, that will never lack, God, we will never be in want or need, but you will supply every need, God, according to your riches and according to your glory, God. Now, Lord, I pray even now that you would move upon your people in this room in a mighty way, God. Ready our hearts, ready our spirits, God, for what you have to say and reveal in this room, God. I I pray that the word will be timely. I pray that the word will penetrate even the depths of our soul on today, God. Let us grasp and understand and comprehend, God, the wisdom that will be poured out today. I pray that you would stir up every gift on the inside of Apostle Reggie, God. Let him preach. Let him pray with confidence and with boldness, Father God. Let it be a transformative word, God, that we will never see you the same way we saw you before, God. We thank you that you are moving in this room, and we thank you that you will get the glory out of our lives, God. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Glory to God. Come on, clap your hands, all ye people. Oh, I feel a shaking, I feel a stirring. 
Oh, God is doing something and moving upon the hearts of his people. Oh, glory be unto God. We, your people, we stand in awe of you. Oh, God, we thank you that even now that you would do something great in this place. Woo. And we thank you, Lord, that you are a God of your word, that you can do anything but fail. And God, I just speak and declare over your people that, Lord, if you be for them, oh, God, who can be against them? Hallelujah. And I sense in this, I sense in the realm of the spirit that many of you have been battling and many of you have been warring, but God is saying your breakthrough is nigh. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, not only are you fighting, but you're teaching another generation how to war in the realm of the spirit. Glory to God. Listen, you can't war even fight with your words, but you have to fight with the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Glory be unto God. And you got to know that, listen, when God tells you to open up your mouth, it's for your own good. Hallelujah. Being silent will stop. Hallelujah. As long as you're silent, the rapist will continue to rape people. Hear me. You better open up your mouth and confront the thing that is trying to stop God's kingdom and stop God's people from moving. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, hallelujah. Listen, let me jump and dip into this word, but before I do, uh, I'm a man of order and I'm a man of integrity. And the word says that we are to give honor to whom honor is due. And so I just wanna just honor my beautiful wife, my ride or die, my bae, my boo. My sweet thing. She tried to dress like me today too, y'all. Amen. I don't mind. I don't mind. Listen, that's an indication that we in love. Hashtag black love matters. Glory to God. But listen, turn uh, with me to your Bibles to Acts. The book of Acts. We're going to start with a very familiar passage of scripture. It is Pentecost Sunday. Glory to God. And that means that God wants to release some fire. I believe that God has an impartation that if you would just dare to believe that you will go to another level, you will go to another dimension in God. I'm not talking about mere materialistic because the word of God declares the things that are seen are temporal and the things that are not seen are eternal. If you're going to walk in the realm of the spirit, listen, you can't see it. Listen, all things are possible to those that believe. You got to move by faith. You got to operate by faith. Listen, somebody shout, it's the kingdom. If we're going to move in the kingdom, if we're going to represent the kingdom, we got to do things the kingdom way. And God is saying to his people uh, this morning that he's getting ready to take you to a place called unlimited. How fitting is it today that today is Pentecost uh, Sunday and I'm going to be talking about unlimited power. Read with me. Glory to God. Acts chapter 1 verse number 8. Very familiar passage of scripture. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem uh, in all in, and in all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Glory to God. We're going to be talking about uh, we're transitioning and moving into a new series called Unlimited. Uh, for the sake of this text and for the sake of uh, uh, to what today represents glory to God, we're going to be talking about unlimited power. Hallelujah unlimited power, unlimited power. And I want to open up this, uh, uh, as I begin to open up this text, I want to present a question to you. What is the source of your power? What is the source of your power? What, as a believer, I want you to ponder on that question. What is the source of your power? Because there are Christians, unfortunately, let me go and tap on into this. Let me go and open up the gate, fighting, swinging in the realm of the spirit. It's okay. I'm equipped for this. I'm built for this. It's amazing to me how Christians, uh, born again believers, have uh, convinced themselves that it's uh, okay to tap into an unlimited power source. Witches, warlocks, consulting deeds, tarot cards, glory to God. None of that is of God. Hallelujah. 
Yeah, I want to box. I'm going to give some demons some black eyes this morning. None of that is of God. It is the truth that will set you free. Maybe you've done it, or maybe you have a friend uh, who's doing it uh, ignorantly. Come on, don't you understand that the word of God declares that uh, uh, my people perish due to uh, hashtag ignorance, a lack of knowledge. What you don't know will work against you. So I want to. I want to hear, uh, I want to come to tell God's people this morning. I want to, I'm going to ask this question periodically as I'm preaching and teaching. Is that all right? What is the source of your power? People have distorted or attempted, the enemy has attempted to uh, distort the authentic move and the power of God. Listen, there is only one source of power as it relates to uh, the Holy Scriptures and the Word of God. And that's the, the avenue of the Holy Spirit. See, let me talk to you for a minute. The word power uh, in the Greek means dunamis. It literally means inherit power. It has the ability to reproduce itself. That's the type of power that a believer carries. But if you're ignorant to your level and your authority and what you carry, you will uh, be tend to believe and go with the masses to say, listen, it's okay if I play with a Ouija board. Uh, let me tell you something. If I be not a man of God, if you play and you try to tap into God or you try to tap into the spirit realm and with an illegitimate and an authorized, unauthorized source, uh, you open up portals for demons. Don't you know that the power of God is enough power to fight against the very thing that is trying to ensnare you? The works of darkness cannot stand against the power of God. But I'm concerned, church, because there are people who have uh, been led astray by people who they respect and people who they reverence and people who they love and said, listen, it's OK to, you know, play with tarot cards. It's OK to, you know, consult the dead. The devil is a liar. I don't I didn't serve a, a, a God that died. I serve a risen king. Glory be unto God. Hallelujah. Uh, listen, stop believing this foolishness and stop being tossed to and fro uh, like every wind and every wind of doctrine. Listen, the, the Bible says in the last days that many shall depart from the faith. I've never seen so many Christians uh, talking about they woke. Uh, brother, wokeness can't get you to heaven. Uh, there is no other name under heaven whereby men shall be saved. It's Jesus the Christ is the only way. In fact, the Bible says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Listen, no man comes to the Father except through the Son. You have to tap into the power of God and do it God's way. You got to do it for the kingdom. And listen, the, the devil, I'm going to tear up some devils today. I, I, I just Today is the day. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says that you know, uh, uh, let me tell you. So, so dunamis, I said dunamis, it literally means power, potential, and ability. And the word, so my, my text is, and ye shall receive power right uh, uh so so when you have the power of god you can move in supernatural abilities outside of receiving god's power you are only an empty vessel in an empty shell let it be known and people have manipulated the church and uh listen i, I all this foolishness my my spirit is just vexed they have psychics talking about uh, uh going to you know uh, uh the, listen is, is the word of god not enough uh, is the prophet the prophetic word and and the prophetic office not enough come on glory Glory to God. Why in the world I'm going to have to go consult with a median? They got mega, mega churches with psychics and median and to having them speak over their life. Listen, I can't let you speak over a rock. Glory to God, because I understand the power of God. I understand the authority of God. And listen, if you're going to tap into unlimited power, you got to know and understand where your power source comes from. The Bible says that. Glory to God. Uh, power, potential, and ability. The Spirit of God has always been from the beginning of time. Somebody shout, prove it, preacher. When God created the heavens and earth, the Bible declares that it was the Spirit of God that hovered 
upon the face of the earth. Glory to God. So I want to let you know and I want to uh, allow you to see that God's spirit has been from the beginning. Hallelujah. It was the spirit of God that hovered upon the face of the earth. Glory to God. And, and when God created the heavens and earth, listen, uh, you got to know that God spoke something into existence. That's the type of power that we carry as a believer. You cannot tap into an illegitimate source and a demonic source and expect to operate in God's kingdom. It's only going to be a matter of time before the demons. It's only going to be a matter of time before the witches. It's only going to be a matter of time before the warlocks begin to turn you. Come on. Uh, listen, it will be as the days of the seven sons of Sceva. Glory to God. Let me be in the number. Apostle Reggie, I know. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, I don't want to be left powerless or uh, when it's time to fight a demon. Come on. Hallelujah. Listen, you're going to come at me in one direction, but you're going to flee in seven. You got to know and understand the power and authority that you carry. Somebody shout, I have power. The power of God will cause you to downcast and to, to overthrow demons and demonic sources and demonic spirits and demonic roots. I'm often complexed or perplexed rather when you don't understand as a believer the power and authority that you carry. You have unlimited power, but you cannot tap into the unlimited power of God through an unauthorized power source. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about the power of God. Hallelujah. Here we see in the text, I want to I want to give you some background before I really dive into my 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 text. We see in the text of scripture that uh, uh, Jesus has let me paint the picture. First of all, Pentecost literally means 50. Uh, seven Sundays after he ascended uh, into heaven. On day 50, if the promise of the Holy Spirit came down, the Bible says, and there was a sound from heaven as a rushing and mighty wind. Glory to God. But see, uh, um, before he left, isn't it un awesome and isn't it amazing how God gives us words of encouragement that he, before he leaves, he says, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. He told his uh, uh, disciples in, in Luke over there, I believe, chapter number 24, he says, tarry ye here in Jerusalem until you've been endued with power from on high. Glory to God. Listen, you have a, you have a promise from God as a believer believer that you will walk in the power of God. You have a promise from God as a believer that you will come on tread upon serpents. You will tread upon scorpions. You have all power in the palm of your hand and nothing by any means shall hurt you. When you come into awareness of the power that you carry, you're going to tell the devil, I wish you would. Glory to God. God has already and always operated. The power of God came through the avenue of his Holy Spirit. Let me go all the way back before I even go there. Every believer that God used in the Old Testament and New Testament operated in a dimension of power. Uh, in fact, the Bible says that uh, when God got ready to use his, his, his patriarchs, that in the Old Testament, the Spirit of God will come upon them for service. Glory to God. And as they've completed the assignment in the earth, uh, the Spirit of God will lift up off of them. What am I saying to you, saints of God? You cannot do or you cannot operate or you cannot destroy and uproot demonic activities if you don't care the power of God and you got to know that listen and when you believe by virtue of you confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior you begin to get be endued with power from on high but see in the Old Testament God operated it just a little bit different hallelujah glory to God it's important as a believer to know and understand the source of your power so let me let me tell you this real quick. God, the father is in heaven. Jesus, the Christ, ascended and sits on the right hand of the father, which also means that Jesus Christ is in heaven. Who is here on earth? 
Come on, some of y'all, y'all going to talk to me this morning. The Holy Spirit, the, the Holy Ghost, glory to God, right? He told him, in, be endued, uh, listen, uh, tarry here in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. What was he talking about? He was talking about the promise of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is here and lives with us here on earth. We serve a triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that there are three that bear reckon in heaven, and these three agree in one. Come on, they are in perfect tandem, in perfect operation, in perfect unison with one another. Come on, hallelujah. You got to know that God is a kingdom that is not divided because we know and the scriptures declare that the king, a kingdom divided shall not stand. But I want to tell you and I want to implore to you this morning that the source of your power, uh, it has always been the source of the saints power in the old in, in the old testament and it's still the source of today's saints the 21st century uh saints power it's the same power which is holy spirit hallelujah glory to god it was by hallelujah it was by the spirit of god that moses led the children out of israel out of Egyptian bondage and captivity. It was by the spirit of God uh, that Daniel could interpret dreams from King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, it was by the spirit of God uh, that the favor of God rests on Joseph. And everywhere that he went, it was he had favor. And not only did Joseph have favor, other people could see the favor on his life. I want to prophesy over these people that are sitting in this room and the people that are watching, my God, by airway. Glory to God that, listen, may the favor of God be evident that you walk and carry his power. Somebody shout power. It is the power of God that is instilled on the inside of us that gives us the ability to move and to operate in the supernatural. There is an unseen realm that we cannot see in, with our naked eye. This is the material realm. I see this table. I can touch this table. Glory to God. I see the lights. I see the wall. I see the room. But there is a realm, hallelujah, a supernatural realm that is in higher order. That's why the Bible declares that we are to walk in the spirit so that we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Our power comes from within our spirit man. Come on, glory to God. I can't do anything on my own accord. Don't be looking at me strange as if I'm, I'm preaching with demonstration and with power because of something I've done. No, I understand the, the dunamis of God. I understand the power of God. I understand the authority of God. And you will come into awareness this day if you don't already know. If you don't know, now you know. Baby, baby, glory to God. If you don't know, oh, somebody caught that in the spirit. You got to know that everything that God did and how the old saints operated was by the spirit of God. Samson moved in supernatural strength by the spirit of God. He could literally tear an animal to a uh, part with his bare hand. Come on, hallelujah. Listen, don't you know that God will call, listen, when you understand the power that you carry, you will slay giants, David. When you understand the power that you carry, you will rent lions with your bare hand. You will let my God of Zion. Come on, anything that comes in your path, you will annihilate it, Joshua. It was by the spirit of God that every enemy that came up against Joshua and them, glory to God, he annihilated the enemies of God. Why? Because God's word had already went before him. Why? Because he carried and operated in the power of God. If you're going to be successful in this thing, you're going to have to understand the source of your power. Don't let nobody tell you. That it's okay to get a get a card reading. Hallelujah. What power source are they tapped into? Glory to God. Or read your palm. Uh, no, thank you, but no thank you. Uh, if you keep messing with me, I'm going to go and cast you out. Glory to God. And listen, how, uh, listen, God is not a respecter of person. There was a woman in the Bible that carried the spirit of divination. And the Bible says that, that, that she followed him many days. 
And the Bible declares that he began to become vexed. And he began to open up his mouth and speak and move in the authority that he carried. And hallelujah. And the spirit of divination had to depart from her. Don't you know that you carry the power to tread upon serpents? Don't you know you carry the power to cast out devils? Come on, signs and wonders shall follow those that believe. They shall speak with new tongues and they shall cast out devils in my name. Paul already knew and understood the assignment. He understood the authority that he walked in. And the Bible says, when he got sick and tired of being sick and tired, he cast out the spirit of divination. And I sense in this room, many of you have not opened up your mouth and took authority over the thing that has been tormenting you. That's why the thing is still there. That's why the thing has not left. That's why the thing, come on, glory to God. Listen, I ain't got time to be wrestling with no devils. Yes, I know the word declares, hallelujah, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers, against uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. You can't box a demon. In order to fight a demon who dwells and operates in the realm of the spirit, you must be tapped in the spiritual realm. That's the source of your power. Jesus told his disciples, stay right here until you're endued with power. That word endued literally means covered with power. To be cloaked, to be have garments, to be drenched in power. Glory be unto God. Hallelujah. Listen, don't, don't, don't try to fight no devil without the power of God. Unlimited power. And we see how the power and the spirit of God operated in the Old Testament. And even in the New Testament, saints had to operate in the same power of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says over in Matthew 3.16, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, Matthew 3.16, when John the Baptist began to baptize Jesus, the Bible says that the heavens were open, and lo, there was a voice that came down from heaven and said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. The Bible says that a, a, a spirit of a dove came descending down upon him. This is the Trinity in action. God the Father spoke. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus the Christ was uh, manifested, God on earth. And the Holy Spirit was symbolic. Uh, uh, the dove was symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Glory. So we see the Holy Trinity in motion in Matthew uh, chapter number three. And so why am I telling you this? Come on. The same power that the Old, old Saints, uh, uh, the Old Testament saints operated in was the same power power that Jesus had to operate in. It was the, the, the spirit of God that descended upon him as a dove and then he began the work of his ministry. I don't want to encourage you. Come on, let me talk to you for a moment. Don't try to do anything. Come on, without the power of God. Listen, I'm, he said he's not going to leave you comfortless, but he's going to send a comforter. Come on, Terry, until you receive the promise. Lord, I'm not going anywhere until I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit, until I'm encapsulated with your power, until I'm endued with power from on high and you got to know as a believer that you carry the power of God but listen what had happened was many of you not operating in your God given authority the child acting a monkey you got family members who are wayward don't you know that the power of God, listen, don't you know what happened in the days of the centurion? When you begin to pray, when you begin to stand in, the, stand in the gap for others who cannot pray and stand in the gap, come on, he said, listen, Lord, I'm not even worthy for you to come under the roof of my house, but God speak thy word only, and my servant shall be healed. I dare you to begin to tap into the dunamis of God and begin to stand in the gap for the thing that you believe in God for. And I sense many of you have been praying 
for loved ones. Many of you have been praying for friends. Many of you have been praying for family members. And I dare you to begin to go into another dimension of unlimited power through the process of intercessory prayer. Come on, don't you know that it was Moses as he began to stand in the gap on behalf of the people of children of Israel that God was getting ready to destroy. He said, God, remember your word. Listen, when you carry a dimension in a power of intercessory, God myself, hallelujah, you can, my God, cause God to respond to you. No longer will it be acceptable for you to just Lord, they've been doing that for 50 years. Is there anything too hard for God? What would happen if you tapped into the unlimited power called intercessory prayer and really begin to stop agreeing with everybody else who don't carry the power of God that can't move? Come on, this speaker from here, uh, hallelujah, to the back room. No, I want to talk to somebody. Come on, I perceive you as a man of God. I perceive you as a woman of God. Listen, get, get, get connected with people who have a track record that can hear from heaven, that can move, come on, in times of peril, that can move and touch and agree with you don't you know the word says where two or three are gathered together in my name there am I in the midst listen get you somebody who can pray get you somebody who can touch and agree I don't care what they say I don't care what the situation looks like though it looks impossible is there anything too hard for my God all things come on the thing that are impossible with man are possible with God and God wants you to know that you got to start praying fervently come on you can't quit glory yes listen God talking to me real good you can't be agreeing with everybody else you can't jump on the bandwagon with everybody else you gotta be the one that is set apart uh, no not this time God told me to pray as you begin to pray, as you begin to stand in the gap, you will begin to tap into a dimension called unlimited power. That's the type of power that you carry. Listen, stop agreeing with them. Stop being so quick. Oh, Lord, the gas prices is, ooh, it's high. I don't care if it was $50 a gallon. I'm still going to ride with this cute. In fact, when it gets $50, I'm going to make sure I have my cute girlfriend on the bike back of my motorcycle. Because I serve a God that will provide. I serve a God, hallelujah, that owns a cattle over a thousand hill. I don't care nothing about no gas prices. I'm going to eat good. Steak, filet mignon, and all of the such. When you operate in power, you got to be careful what you agree with. Lord Jesus, these gas prices show sure is high. Um, uh, hold on. God, well, Lord, bright on my tongue. They ain't, they listen, they ain't too high that God can't provide. I dare you to begin to change your language. I want to challenge you to change your thought processes. I want to challenge you to change your power. Listen, when you put it in the atmosphere, don't you know that your power, that your word have the ability to create? Come on, glory to God. There is a dimension of power that you can speak things that be not as told they were. God, I thank you that you're lowering the gas prices. God, I thank you that I'm a homeowner. God, I thank you that I'm going to do anything but fail oh god i thank you that no matter what happens you are the god that protects you are the god that will shamar you are the god that guards the same power that the old testament saints operated in is the same power that came upon jesus the christ and this is the same power that god promised to his disciples he said tarry ye here in jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high listen you can't come on you can't fight against no devils without the power of god you can't fight against your enemy without the power of god let me let me rephrase that If you are a believer, I would not suggest that you try to fight this stronghold that these devils you're trying to fight. Hallelujah. On your own accord. You're going to be tired. You're going to be woe out. You're going to be weary. You're going to be all of the above. But listen, when God be for you, 
who can be against you? Listen, and I sense in this room that God is about to give you strategies in how to fight. Hallelujah. Listen, this devil that has been wreaking havoc in your family, this devil that has been wreaking havoc in your bloodline, one strategy from God can give you the, come on, hallelujah, the authority and the assignment that you need to overcome this thing. It's not about that you don't carry the power. It's that you've not tapped into another level of heaven that God may show you a road called straight. Come on, that you've not tapped into another level that when you begin to interact and encounter non-believers hallelujah that my God of Zion that they begin you begin to minister to the woman at the well and tell her that the hallelujah that the one that you're with not is not hallelujah the one that you're with now is not your husband hallelujah listen that she may go back and a whole family and a whole generation is saved I met a man that told me something hallelujah everything that I ever did that's the power of the prophetic hallelujah anointing that's the power of the word of knowledge. Glory to God. May God, hallelujah. And many of you have been praying I look to go deeper in the prophetic. I declare and I decree it to be so in in Jesus' name. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, hallelujah. If any man speak in an un unknown tongue, hallelujah, his, his understanding is unfruitful. Hallelujah. But you got to know that, listen, but for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. It is the spirit that make it intercession. Hallelujah. Listen, as you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, you will build up your most holy faith. According to Jude, as you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, you cannot, hallelujah, I'm not talking to you. Don't, don't be convinced and don't be moved when folk don't understand what you're saying. Even you don't understand what you're saying, but you understand that the power of God is speaking and operating through you in the name of Jesus. Power. Unlimited power. What is your power source for the believer? Your only power source is the spirit of God. The word of God is your authority. Don't you know that the Bible says for the word of God is quick. For the word of God is powerful. For the word of God is sharper than any double-edged sword. Hallelujah. Don't you know that the word of God, it carries weight. Don't you know that the word, come on, that's why you got to speak the word into existence. God, your word declares, uh, you said give, and it shall be given unto me. Good measure. Press down and run it together. Shake it together and run it over. Shall men give unto my bosom. God, according to your word. Hallelujah. Listen, I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the field. I am blessed when I go out. I'm blessed when I come Come in, oh God, according to your word, hallelujah, nothing by any means shall hurt me. Oh God, hallelujah, according to your word, you are my present help in times of trouble. Oh God, according to your word, you better begin into the habit of speaking the word of God. You better get into the habit of decreeing the word of God and declaring the word of God. So shall my word be that goeth out of my mouth. It shall not go shame. It shall not return void, but it shall occur accomplish the very thing I sent it to do. Open up your mouth and give your God a praise. I dare you to shout. I dare you to begin to give him glory. I dare you to begin to acknowledge your key. Come on, Shabbat him in this room because he has given you power. Oh, Shabbat him in this room because he has given you authority. Oh, praise ye, oh God. Hallelujah. You got to know that when you open up your mouth that the power of God is being released. Unlimited power. Unlimited power. Whew, yeah, I'm going to stay right there. Unlimited power. Unlimited power in this room, God. Bring your people in awareness of the power that they carry so they can fight against, fight off, fight off depression. Oh, God, I thank you now that your people come into awareness of the power that they carry, that they can fight off anxiety and worry. Hallelujah. Don't you know the word declares, I'd be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your request be made known unto God. Hallelujah. When you feel yourself down, when you feel yourself out, when you feel yourself wiped out, I dare you to begin to tap into your unlimited power. Y'all call glory to God. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. When you speak, come on. From on high, the 12 disciples. 
receive power from on high. I want to tell God's people that you got to know that there is only one legitimate source of power. There is only one legitimate source of power. There is only one legitimate source of power. Listen to this here. First Thess Thessalonians 1 and 5. Because our God came to you uh, not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of men he, uh, we pro proved uh, to be among you for your sake. Glory be unto God. Romans 13 and 1 says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God, the powers that are ordained of God. 2 Corinthians 1 and 7, for the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Come on, glory to God. I dare you to begin to decree the word of God over your own life. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly thereof will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Come on, you. that means you can go through and still move in the power of God. No weapon that is formed against God's people will prosper and every tongue that arise up against them shall be utterly condemned. Somebody shout, I have the power. You have the power to speak. Come on, you have the power to declare. You have the power to decree a thing and it will be established in the earth and God says that he will give you power and hallelujah, listen, wait for the, wait for the promise. Come on, there is something that God wants to give you if you'll be willing to wait. Wait on the Lord, I say wait. Glory to God and you gotta know that God has promises. It must, it shall and it will come to pass. You gotta know that the promises of God, they are yea and amen man you got to know that the promises of God hallelujah whatever he said he is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man he have to repent hath he said it shall he not do it hath he spoken it shall he not make it good listen you call come on I declare that you will walk in a new dimension of power you will walk in a new dimension of authority why because God promised to you it's yours hallelujah the power of God Not in word, but also in deed. You will cast out devils. You will speak with new tongues. And you will heal the sick. Hallelujah. It is by the power of God that as you begin to connect with what God said concerning you, glory to God, that the sickness that the deaf ears have to be open, that the blinded eyes have to be open. Come on, that the dead things, come on, glory to God. Come on, Ezekiel, uh, may you speak to every dry bone. Come on, and many of you walk in a dimension to call forth things. Glory to God. And I see in the realm of the spirit that God will use you greatly in this realm and in this arena that you will begin to, come on, God, many of you, God is saying that you will speak to those who are suicidal and you will, hallelujah, you will nurture them back to hell. That's the the type of power that you carry. That's the type of authority that you carry. Listen, you got to know, don't stop downplaying yourself. Come on, stop selling yourself short, but you are a glory carrier. You carry the anointing of God. It is God that has equipped you for this. It is God that has built you for this. Will you tap into the power of God? Jesus of sins. Jesus ascends 50 days after he goes to sit on the right hand of the Father to intercede on behalf of the saints. The disciples was gathered in one place. They were on one accord. And they heard a sound. Glory to God. Come on, musicians, start playing. Walk with me. They begin to hear a sound. Hallelujah. And the revelation that God is giving me is that when something from heaven invades the earth, 
come on, there is a sound that is created in the atmosphere. Glory be unto God. And as the sound is created, come on, you can hear it before you can see it. That's why, come on, the speed of, come on, a sound bump travels faster. Glory to God. You can see the, you can hear the thing. My, my God, before it'll ever come. Have you ever been outside watching and playing? You can hear it and you're looking all around. Where is it? I can imagine that's how it was on the day of Pentecost. What? You, you, you hear that sound? Glory to God. Hold on, hold on. There is a sound. Come on. There were cloven tongues that came from heaven. And it began to pierce the atmosphere on earth. How glory be unto God. Let me tell you that you are the evidence. Woo, katabaya. You are the evidence that God's power rests strongly and greatly upon you. Listen, even before you come, I see in the realm of the spirit, hallelujah, that demons begin to manifest. Have you come to torment me before my time? That's the type of power and authority that you walk in as a believer. A poor, hallelujah, a blood-born washed again believer listen there was a sound that came from heaven that began to invade the earth hallelujah and every person from every nationality from every ethnic background begin to hear the sound it is the sound that my god when god's people begin to come on one accord it is the sound that will be created hallelujah that everybody can identify what the sound is oh glory to god Ooh, I sense in this hallelujah contagious church Charlotte they have a sound my God as you begin to open up your mouth and you begin to give your God a praise come on your sound will begin to invade the earth come on come together come on up come on come together on one accord just as it was in the day of Pentecost so that God can invade this place Woo! show yes 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 uh, they were coming gathered together and they were worshiping God on one accord glory be unto God and they heard a sound Woo. that was a promise that was released Jesus told John the Baptist you baptize me with water hallelujah but in the days to come you will be baptized with fire. Oh, glory be unto God. Hallelujah. It was cloven tongues of fire that begin to invade the earth. Anytime you see fire in the text of scripture, that's symbolic of God's Holy Spirit. I'm trying to teach the people something this morning. Contagious church, we got to come together on one accord so that we can release a sound. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I see in the realm of the spirit as we create a sound, God is saying that there is going to be a great drawing. I see people flooding this church. And they be, all of them begin to, I can hear in the realm of the spirit that there was a, a compelling for me to come. Yes, They're going to come because they're going to be drawn, not because of something that I'm doing. But and I, as I be lifted up, God is saying that he will begin to draw all men unto him. As we lift up the name that is above every name, I declare that every knee will bow. I declare that every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. But in order for the gathering to come and for the gathering to happen, we must come together and gather in this place on one accord that the sound of heaven is being released. Oh, glory be unto God. We your people. Oh, Lord, and I thank you that even now I feel like God has given us a prophetic instruction in this hour. Stand to your feet. Let us come together. Let us begin to lift up the name that is above every name. And as he began to lift up the name that is above every name, God will give us direction. God will give us clarity. God will guide us to our next place. We're on the move. We're on the move. 
we're going somewhere. There are great things ahead of us. Oh God, oh yep, there it is. Get it Get it Oh, release. Let there be a great release in this house. Let there be a great sound in this house. Oh God, we your people. We stand together on one accord as it is in your word. A sound as a rushing in a mighty wind. Oh, release the sound. Yes, it is a man. Sakara la boko show. Release the sound. Yeah, da 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 da. Marco, shake it, da 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 da. Lord, I just thank you now that as we release our sound, that it will be held, hallelujah, it will be heard from afar off, that there will be a great gathering, that there will be a great gathering of saints, that they will declare the wondrous works of the Lord. Oh God, do it. Oh God, as you've shown us this day, oh God, do it. Oh, we, your people, we believe. We stand in, hallelujah, we stand in agreement with your word. The sound, the sound. Release the sound. Yere baba kashaya. Yere demo kosho. The sound will distinguish you. The sound will set you apart from others. Release the sound. 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 as it was on the day of Pentecost that the sound is released and the unlimited power is released how be it that I hear these speaking in our native tongue declaring the wondrous works of the Lord come on it's in the sound you got to note that there is, come on, you have been, God has grafted you. God has even hardwired you to release a sound that heaven will identify with. And as you begin to release the sound, come on, great power will be released. Woo! Power will be swift. Power, release your power. Sweep your power in this room, oh God. We will release the sound of heaven. We will release the sound of heaven. We will release the sound of heaven that your name may be glorified. Yes, Oh, do what only you can do. Oh, move only how you can move. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Listen, I want to open up the altar. This altar is open. Hallelujah. And there is something very important that I real, really feel God is pressing in my heart. And in the days to come, God, God is going to teach you how to navigate and operate in his power. Oh, do it that you may bring your own name glory. Oh, do it that you may bring your own name honor. Oh, do it, Father, that you may bring your own name praise. Hallelujah. We want to touch and agree with you. And God wants to reiterate the fact that the Holy Spirit equips you to prophesy. The Holy Spirit equips you to pray. The Holy Spirit equips you to preach. The Holy Spirit equips you to move in mighty miracles, signs, and wonders, and demonstrations. And I hear in the realm of the Spirit, I want this power. Blessed are they do that do hunger and thirst after your righteousness for they shall be filled. Fill them anew and fill them afresh, God. In Jesus' name. You have to move in the power that God has.
has ordained for you to move in. Come, we want to touch and we want to agree with you. We want to pray with you. That God really shows up. That you have personal encounters with him. That you may know without a shadow of a doubt it is God. Let it be as in the days of Saul, Father. As he was on the road to Damascus. I pray, God, that there are godly encounters that's being released in this room. That it may shift the entire livelihood of your people as they know it. May they relentless pursue you with, hallelujah, tenacity. That you may take them to their next place. In Jesus' name. Maybe that there's someone that you maybe not need prayer. That there is someone that you want to stand in the gap for. Come. As you come, I believe God will show his demonstration of his power. Come. This altar is open. Glory to God. Hallelujah.
Maybe someone watching via the internet. And listen, you saw what transpired in this place this morning, and it moved you in a way that it never moved you before. And it left you curious as to who is this man that we are talking about? And how can I put my faith in what you are talking about? Listen, his name is Jesus. He came that none shall perish, but that all shall have everlasting life. He laid down his life for you. He laid down his life for you because he knew that we couldn't lay our lives down for ourselves. He stepped out of heaven, put on the garments of mankind, lowered himself even lower than the angels, and said, listen, I'm going to pay the price for their sin I'm going to go to the cross I'm going to take the chastisement the bruises the beating I'm going to take the criticism the persecution and I'm going to bear this cross that you may live forever with me God loves you he cares about you he has an assignment for you. He has purpose for you. He has a destiny for you. And if you have never put your faith, your trust in him, today is the day. We don't ever want to miss a moment to invite you into his family. He says that we've been adopted as sons and daughters. We can cry out, Abba, Father, and he hears us. For the veil has been torn in twain. No more do we have to go to an earthly priest for our sins to be forgiven. But he is our high priest. And 
forever be the atonement for every sin that we commit. If we go before him and ask for forgiveness, he is faithful and just to not only forgive us of our sins, but to also cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I want to say if there's anyone who says that I want to, I want to put my faith in this Jesus, we definitely want to leave room for you to come up front. We want to pray with you. If not, if there's anyone online, listen, we want you to send us a message. Tell us about this, this new journey that you're about to embark on. We want to celebrate you because it says if the angels can celebrate over one soul that gives his life over, we want to surely celebrate you. And I just pray that from this day forward, that you walk in the power and the authority and the anointing that was ordained and destined from you from the beginning of time. Let no one take you away from who God has called you to be. For you were called to be great on this earth, that he may get the glory out of your life. Amen? Amen and amen. Listen, um, this Saturday we have our, see I was about to say it again, <laughs> wild fun. We have our fearless luncheon. This Saturday, if you haven't registered, please, there is still time to register. If you have some products or a business and you want to set up a vending table, we definitely have an opportunity for you to do that as well. There's just a small fee for that, but you can go to uh, www.fearlesswomenglobal.org and you'll have all the information there that you need. We just want to see you in a place as we said, for wildfire, for all our contagious members and family, don't let the visitors outdo you. Don't let there be more visitors than members of this, of this ministry. Because a, a wildfire there was. So we, we give glory to God anyway, but we just want everybody to be there. I believe that there's something that God wants to reveal to all of us. And let's just stay in alignment with what he is doing on the behalf of his body. I'm not saying that this event is greater than any other event. But I believe that if you come, that you would get exactly what you've been praying and believing God for. Amen? So if you haven't registered, please go to that website, www.fearlesswomanglobal.org, and um, you can find all the information there. I believe that's everything that I have. We have our Discipleship Training Institute starting back up on this Monday. Uh, we're starting discipleship. So if you have said, listen, I want to go back to school. I just want to learn more about my faith. Listen, I highly encourage you to go to discipleship institute, discipleshipinstitute.org as we are starting our first class. We have a 10-month certificate program. Um, and listen, there's so much information and content that will benefit you on this faith journey and I highly encourage you to check this out and just be a part of it. So we have our discipleship starting uh, this Monday that goes for I think six weeks or eight weeks, six weeks, goes for six weeks. Then we have hermeneutics, then we have Christian doctrine, we got spiritual warfare, leadership, we have homiletics and we just added Christian counseling there as well. So if you're any other area, you don't have to do the 10 months. If there's a specific area that you want to be a part of, definitely, you know, reach out to us and we'll get you uh, situated with that. So that way you can have all the credentials that you need. You're not just somebody walking out here and saying, yeah, I believe God called me here. No, I have the credentials to say that this is the area that God has called me to be a part of. So listen, if you have time or if you feel like that's in your heart, we definitely want you to take advantage of that. Let us stand as we pray ourselves to dismiss. Truly the presence of the Lord was in this room. Let us carry the residue of what took place in this building today out uh, for the remainder of this week, whether in your workplace, in your family, and any relationship that you have. Let us be contagious in all that we do say and think. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, most gracious God, we thank you for such an amazing service, God. We thank you for just another opportunity, God, to worship you, God, for you are who you say you are, and you have never changed, God. Lord, but I pray that we have changed in this room, Father God, that we have a new way of thinking, God, that, Lord, that you have changed our perspectives, God, that you have changed even how we view you, God. Let us have a deeper understanding of who you are, Father God. Enrich us, enlighten us, and empower us, God. 
God, as we continue on walking and fulfilling the purpose and the things that you have called us to fulfill, God. We thank you even now, God, for the preached word, God, that as it is gone forward, God, that, Lord, it will literally settle in our hearts, Father God, that we can pick from it, God, anytime we are challenged, anytime we are vexed, or anytime we are just depressed, God, in understanding who we are on this earth, Father God, for we will be a people who will walk in power, we will speak in power, and we will live in power, God, for we believe that our source of power is unlimited, Father God. So let us be reminded of that daily, God, and even as we depart this place, God, let us never depart from your presence, God, but let your holy angels be encamped about your people God keep them safe and secure from all hurt all harm and all danger and we will forever pray now unto him who was able to keep us from stumbling and make us stand in the glory of his presence blameless with great joy be glory honor dominion power majesty might before time now and forevermore it is in the mighty the marvelous and the matchless name of Jesus Christ we all pray and say amen and amen say I will make the love the faith and the worship of God contagious on the count of three real big we are contagious one two three we are contagious you all be blessed we love you have an amazing Sunday